Here are the top 10 clan war tips that will help you win wars in 3 star more bases. The first tip has to be the most common mistake I see, and that is using the same army for every base. I'm looking at you, E-Drag users. The base will be completely spread out, have all single infernos, and someone will say in chat, how should I attack this base with E-Drags? The answer is you don't. Please use anything else. Trying to attack an anti-e-dragon base with e-drags will never be better than using another strategy. Please learn 2-3 to three strategies and use the strategy that works the best for whoever you are attacking. For example, I alternate my ladder attacks from Super Blimp, Lava Loon, and Hybrid. This way, I'm always ready to use these attacks and more. If you are one of the noobs who only use one attack strategy, I would suggest learning at least one air and one ground attack strategy. The CC alone can ruin your whole attack very quickly. Dealing with the CC is much easier if you already know what is inside of the clan castle. I would suggest watching your clanmates attacks to see if the enemy's bases are all using the same defensive CC or if there are variations between bases. Say they all use E-Drags which is pretty common. You can plan for that before you even start your attack. Another tip is to scout the base and click on the CC. Doing this will tell you how much of the CC is actually filled. This can also give away what is or isn't inside. For example, there's 32 out of 35 spaces filled. You can assume that there is a Titan inside. As someone who records and edits bad attacks every week, I can confidently say that this is the main factor in an attacker failing constantly. And that is simply not understanding how to use your heroes. The heroes are all very good at different things. And depending on what equipment you have equipped, they will each need to be used Used differently. Without going too far into equipment, I would just say the number of times I've seen someone shoot the giant arrow straight off the map and get zero value is quite astonishing. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. But no matter what the hero equipment you are using, the heroes still have basic rules. So I will say the most common mistakes I see from each one. Starting off with the champ, which is the most commonly misused hero by a mile. We are never going to want to drop the champ onto other heroes or CC. This will only guarantee that your champ will get almost zero value. You want your champion to be taking out defenses while your main army is distracting them. A good example of how to use the champ can be seen in a standard hybrid attack. After you send in your hogs and miners, you can send in your champ near or with them. Doing this guarantees that she will be taking out defenses without getting targeted by any single infernos or heroes. Sending the champ off on its own can be very useful, like taking out an eagle or another priority defense. But the second a skeleton trap pops up she becomes very vulnerable. The next most misused hero is going to be the Warden. Now if you are good at the game you'd understand that this is definitely the easiest hero in the game. But this video is for noobs and noobs have no idea how to use the Warden. Assuming that you are using the basic hero equipment, understanding when to use the Warden's ability is going to be the key to success. I can't tell you how many times I see people save their warning ability for the next attack or use it right after all of the troops die. Timing with the warding ability is really dependent on the attack you are using and of course what town hall you are at. For example, at Town Hall 12, you really just have to worry about the Eagle and the Town Hall. But once you get into Town Hall 13, the scatter shots can kill all your hogs very fast. My only tip for timing the warning ability is to use it when your troops are about to take a large amount of damage, like the Town Hall explosion, Eagle shots, bomb towers, scatter shots, and of course the monolith. Something else I see way too often is misplacing the warden. First of all, you're going to want to drop him behind your core army so that he buffs them and can hit them with all of his ability. Besides that, just use him on air for air attacks and ground for ground attacks. The only reason to deviate from this is warden walks, but no one doing a warden walk needs these tips. The next hero we have is of course the queen. The queen is the center of many attack strategies, so it is very important to master this hero. It should come to no one's surprise that the most common mistake I see with the queen is how people funnel her, or lack thereof a funnel. The queen has pretty far ranging shots, and that means she will more likely than not shoot buildings over the base's walls, in turn making her next target inside the base farther away. This of course makes her more likely to seek out a building that is outside of the building's walls. The easiest way to fix this problem is to use more troops to funnel. Whether that is using super wall breakers instead of the normal ones or using two baby dragons instead of one, you cannot slack on your funneling. Another common mistake noobs make with the queen is that they don't understand her abilities. I will say this right now, the giant arrow is the worst ability in the game and no one can convince me otherwise. Like, have you ever been watching an attacker not use the giant arrow and say to yourself, man, if only he had a giant arrow in that attack, he would have 3 starred. No, it literally has never happened. With that being said, using the queen's good abilities is very important, and yet many noobs instantly use them or wait until she is about to die. 
The best tip I can use for getting better with the queen ability is to use it as late as possible without her letting her get close to death. For example, if she is getting hit by a single inferno and she isn't targeting it, you will want to use her ability early so it doesn't get to full charge. If it does get to full charge, she will either die or use her ability automatically and have a very low amount of health. If you use it early, she will hopefully kill the Inferno Tower and be at full HP. Finally, we have the King. The King has probably the biggest come up from the new hero equipment. Man went from being a tank that would be used to funnel for the Queen to a hero that can take out a large amount of the base by himself. Now, what are the biggest mistakes noobs make with the king? Well, there are a couple of course, and the first one has to be baiting the CC with the king. This is almost never the right play. Countless times I see an E-Dragon just harassing the king until it eventually dies. Another mistake is dropping him right next to a queen or a champ. When you drop him by a queen or a champ, the second he starts getting hit by one, he will start to target them. Now, having your king hit a wall for 15 seconds while getting shot by a hero at the start of your attack almost guarantees that he will get no value. That being said, with the giant gauntlet and rage combo, you can reach over the wall and kill these heroes instantly. This tip is for people running clans. Most clans are going to have a discrepancy in town halls, meaning your number one might be a town hall 15 while your number 25 is a town hall 10. The most basic rule that most clans implement is to attack your mirror in war. And I think unless everyone is the same town hall, this rule absolutely makes zero sense. If everyone only got one attack, this would make sense. But we all get two attacks, and with basic math we can create a strategy that results in more war wins. I suggest that your best player, whether it's number one or number two, attack their number one and number two. Your second player attacks their two and three, and your number three attacks four and five, and so on. If you do this with your top 10 members, this will make people's matchups much easier at the bottom. Using this strategy helps everyone 3 star their attacks instead of getting a 92 star, which in a high percentage war would need to be attacked again anyways. Here at Def Esports, we have implemented this from the start. And yes, we don't have a crazy war log, but it has done very well for us. This next tip is one of the main reasons that you're not constantly 3 starring bases. The siege machine is one of the most important parts of your attack, yet time and time again I see people misuse them. Whether it's using a wall wrecker for an air attack or using a stone slammer for a ground attack, here are some of the more common mistakes noobs do. I'll mention this just because I see it so often, but I really don't think anyone watching this does this, and that is dropping a siege straight on top of a town hall. Of course, they all instantly die besides the stone slammer and the flinger, but still, I have seen it happen way too many times. If you have ever watched any of the worst attacks of the week's videos, you would know that the log launchers are not tanks, yet this is the most common use for noobs. The long launcher does not have a large amount of HP like the wall wrecker, so ideally you want other troops taking for it as it is launching those logs into the base. The stone slammer like the log launcher should be protected, yet most people send it in front of their air troops. You would want the stone slammer to stay alive for as long as possible because it does so much damage. I would suggest dropping loons, your main dragons, and then the stone slammer. The last siege machine I will talk about is the flinger. Now the flinger is one of the best siege machines, but if it takes any damage, it can become almost useless. If you see a part of the base that looks like a really good spot to drop your flinger because there are no mortars or expos, I would suggest dropping a giant or archers to bait out any hidden and Teslas. Just getting shot by Tesla towers or skeleton traps can cause your flinger to get absolutely no value. Using spells properly is one of the hardest skills to master in Clash of Clans. Now if you're just using lightnings in every attack, you might as well hop on Heyday or Boom Beach. Now for players who actually want to play the game, spells can make or break your attacks. Bringing the right spells won't be enough for you as you will need to use them properly. For example, if you draw out the CC with your queen and is filled with the Lava Hound and a Witch, you then drop the poison only on the Lava Hound. At this point, the witch will be constantly spotting skeletons and your queen could be distracted for a very long time and may even die to defenses. This is just an example that I've seen before, but shows how it's not just about bringing the right spells, but also using them correctly. Now, most players understand how heals and rages work, but will continue to drop them incorrectly. The main tip for both is to drop them in front of where the troops are going. This will give you the maximum value out of the spells. A perfect example is a queen walk. If you drop it too far behind, the queen will not be raged for too long. But if you drop it too far in front, the healers will not be raged. Ideally, you want it to drop it far enough in front so that the healers walk into the rage instead of flying out of it. You can make a whole video on tips for spells, but I'll end this section with this tip. While using invis spells, you can look at the top of your screen to see exactly how long the spell has been on screen. For example, if you drop the spell at 2 minutes, it lasts for 4 seconds, so you know that it will go away at 1 minute 56 seconds. 